Hi everybody and welcome back to my modeling channel. So today we're gonna build uh, another uh, Russian airliner, an Ilyushin 86 on scale 144 made by Rovel. So this kit uh, was already uh, made before by Zvezda, sold to Rovel and back to Zvezda. It's a very nice kit so let's open the box and see what we have inside. So we're gonna start this uh, kit review by uh, opening the instruction sheet. So as you can see, it's uh, a couple of pages uh, thick. So we have basically the picture of the model, a descriptive of the aircraft itself, a few more instructions, and uh, the kit descriptions and list of the parts, and then we're getting into the into the instruction sheet for the build. So it's pretty well detailed, I have to say. Lots of small parts and uh, lots of time instructions as well. And at the end, we have about four different livery possible. Two of them are for Armavia, the Armenian airline. Uh, the first one, which is 2003 and after. And uh, the first one, which is the eldest one from 91 to 2003. Then uh, you have the possibility of doing a Chinese uh, airline, uh, Xinjiang, which is the northwest of uh, the country. And also you can do the Sibir uh, livery with the, the classical uh, Russian flag. So uh, this is it for our instruction sheet. Now let's have a, a quick look on the decal sheet. As you can see, it's a pretty big one. It covers all the, the kit the size of the kit. Uh, you have the options uh, on the kits and on the decals to put the windows and the cockpit window or just to uh, mask them and uh, do the details as well. And of course, uh, the quality seems to be pretty nice, but uh, I'll let you know uh, further on when uh, I will uh, build the kit. So let's get to the kit now. Initially, we're gonna start with the clear parts. So you have the options of having all the passenger windows and the cockpit window. Uh, nothing else, no landing lights or parts like that. The fuselage itself is in two parts and all the panel lines and the structure lines are engraved into the plastic which will make my life a little bit simpler. So easy fuselage, two parts that you're going to have to stick together. Now let's get along uh, the other sprue. So we have our uh, four engines. They are honestly uh, pretty basic, but uh, therefore I'll uh, try to enhance that later on. But uh, that's another surprise I will have for you. And we have the horizontal stabilizer. Uh, one of the other sprue is regarding uh, is about the wings. So we have our wings in two parts, sandwich up and down. And uh, let's move on to the undercarriage part, I guess. So we have another uh, sprue for the third main landing gear. Uh, quite a lot of detail, I would say, on, the, on that landing gear. And uh, the uh, engine turbine and the intake. So we'll see what uh, we are going to build this up. But uh, it seems to be a very interesting build. So enough talking and uh, let's start uh, building in a moment. I will just gonna share uh, some other parts with you. So I purchased uh, as well another kit because I want to enhance that kit. So I'll have a little bit more detail on the engines and uh, the thrust reversers as well on that uh, on that kit. And the particularity of the Illusion uh, 86, you have those doors and they are actually passenger doors. So you can open and have the stairs. So uh, that's what I'm planning to do. I hope everything will uh, proceed and uh, will be uh, as good as I hope and give you a pretty nice result. Now, enough of talking and start building. So we're gonna start our project by uh, preparing the horizontal stabilizer and the wings. So uh, we're gonna have to uh, prepare the parts and then we're gonna glue them together as it's a sandwich. I mean, we're gonna glue uh, the upper and lower part together. Then we're gonna do the same uh, for the wings and uh, we're gonna let it dry and uh, while uh, the glue will be drying 
we'll uh, move on to the other part and uh, then we're gonna glue the windows of the fuselage inside uh, the half of uh, the fuselage itself so this model i will uh, just use some uh, decals and uh, it's gonna be uh, the easiest way as i'm gonna do other details now we are moving on to uh, the uh, engine fan so for this uh, i had to uh, take some of those uh, metallic uh, parts photo edge parts uh, which uh, acquire some details and to get uh, that circular part uh, at the proper shape as you can see it requires a lot of uh, fiddling then what we did is uh, each fan is divided in two halves so i have to detach them of course uh, from the sprue and then later on we'll have to uh, bend each blade to uh, the proper shape and then uh, we will uh, put them on that uh, little uh, circle that you saw around So now you can see that uh, the, the fan blades have to stick within this uh, little uh, circle and the problems are uh, it requires a lot of uh, fiddling around and uh, I initially glue with a super glue uh, epoxy those, uh, those little uh, circular wires and the problems I had is they unglued and it was easier to work with them when they were loose but uh, I have to say that the last blade was the biggest challenge and then we had to do it uh, again and again and uh, some require a lot of fiddling until we were able to uh, get the proper shape and uh, the easiest one was the first one and the second one you need to respect as well the alignment and uh, that was part of the challenge it took quite a, a bit of a time but the result was uh, was worth the try So after preparing uh, those uh, fan blades, it was time to uh, put some, add some putties on those uh, windows. And uh, as it always takes uh, a little bit of uh, time to dry it out. So uh, then we can move on to uh, the uh, exhaust turbine uh, of that uh, Ilyushin 86. So uh, of course, once you remove them from the sprues, you have to uh, do a, use your files a little bit to remove the excess uh, on, that, uh, on that part. So that requires a little bit of a time and uh, then we are going to be able to uh, finish the, the mount. So for that I had to uh, take the actual, uh, the actual turbine of uh, the, the kit and remove basically the cone toward the end and then I was able to put it and glue it. So that was uh, one of the requirements. Then uh, you have uh, this other part and those ones were banded uh, toward the exit of uh, the engine. So I basically just use uh, a regular pen and uh, then I was able to uh, put them at the proper shape and then uh, we're gonna be able to use some more glue to put them all together so the final assembly is gonna be uh, mainly made with some uh, epoxy uh, super glue so uh, you're gonna just put basically as you can see that uh, that attachment and then we're gonna put the engine cone uh, on plastic and uh, require a little bit of fiddling and everything will be uh, okay The fan assembly required as well uh, this uh, extra part who needs to be um, mounted ahead basically of the 
of the fan and then we're gonna add as well uh, the the engine cone basically or the fan cone after that I use a regular driller and I decided to uh, remove all this uh, part as I could replace it by a regular grid uh, and that's the thrust reverser basically of that uh, engine and uh, we're gonna be able to uh, remove them from the engine from the sprue then there will be of course a little bit of uh, fiddling and uh, filing as well to get it to the correct shape then we're gonna add that uh, that grid will be uh, give us a little bit more details and a more uh, realistic uh, touch So after preparing those engines, we're gonna remove uh, this grid from the sprue. And of course, there will be a little bit of uh, work on that as well. I have to say that uh, working on photo edge parts, the biggest challenge is when you have to bend parts, not to an angle, but uh, to, um, to a curved surface. And that requires a little bit of, uh, of work. So I'm using normally, uh, well, either a paintbrush or a pen and then I'm able to uh, to adapt it basically to the correct uh, to the correct shape but that's I have to say that it's it's quite a lot of a, of a work compared to what I would do normally but uh, the result is also worth it so after putting them uh, and fitting them on the, the engine now we're going to use some uh, epoxy glue and uh, that will be able to fit basically our thrust reversers then uh, what we will do is we're going to add uh, some more epoxy glue and then we'll be able to fix the fan and uh, the uh, turbine together on those engines. So we are going now to start to work on uh, the passenger door. So of course we remove uh, those parts uh, from the sprues and then using the files to get it. Now I'm using this tool to bend basically the, the metal to the correct, uh, the proper shape. And uh, that basically will be the support of the stairs. And uh, then we're gonna have to do the main door, will be curved and then we're gonna have to uh, fit, fit it basically uh, on, the, on the other door. Now before uh, gluing uh, both uh, engine together, we are going to uh, paint them. So for these I use a mix of uh, grey and a little bit of uh, metal together and I will uh, paint basically all the interior of the engines. Then after that I will uh, close the engine together and uh, I will do a little bit of weathering but you will see that uh, later on. So uh, I use some uh, pig metallic pigment for that, uh, for that part uh, and also I have my uh, I would say makeup uh, kit and uh, where I use uh, different type of uh, colors but mainly black I have also uh, some oxida oxidized uh, metallic color that I'm using and this time I'm using uh, not only that uh, makeup tool but I'm also using the paintbrush uh, and that's mainly to be able to give that stain and uh, that jet wash basically leaving the aircraft after that I use uh, my panel wash for the turbine and the uh, engine fan as well and uh, then we'll be ready to close down those engines and let them dry. Now I'm going to work uh, on the gear, uh, basically the wheel whale and uh, we're going to start to glue them uh, inside the fuselage and we're going to prepare our fuselage to be uh, closed. So uh, I'm going to put the nose gear, do the nose gear bay and then I'm going to add again uh, some modeling paste to avoid having the plane sitting on its tail. Now we're going to start working again on the passenger door. So uh, it was a long time getting basically all the, st the, the stairs at the proper shape. Then I use that tool to be able to glue basically that uh, that band and that's a stripe of metal uh, metal stripe, 
around the, the, the stairs and then uh, I use also some glue as they broke at some points during the, the build. So uh, now what we are going to do, we're going to put the uh, extra part basically who's going to hang in front of the door and then uh, we're going to try to fit them uh, all together uh, and to make them uh, basically standing at a, a correct shape. So let's add a little bit more details to our uh, wheels basically. So uh, I had some uh, basically more details and I will put that at the center and that give a, basically uh, we will see some more screws and add a little bit more realistic uh, shape to our model. And then there was that uh, big circle around uh, basically the, the wheel and uh, around the tire. And that gives uh, honestly at the end that give a pretty nice touch. So now we're going to work on the passenger door, so uh, basically I'm going to drill a hole and, uh, on both passenger door, but you will see that toward the end, and then we're going to make that opening, and of course uh, we're going to have to use uh, some uh, drilling tool, and then uh, of course uh, a big file and, uh, to get it correctly uh, open, and then we're going to try to, uh, I will use some uh, plastic card, remain from uh, other models that I made, and then I will cut basically an opening and that will be uh, that will show basically the entrance uh, of the aircraft but that's going to be still very basic as uh, it's going to be toward the, the belly of the aircraft so we won't be able to access much and see a lot of it Now that our uh, passenger door uh, entry are uh, finished, it's time to uh, glue the fuselage together. So we're going to be able to uh, finish that and then uh, while uh, it will be uh, still uh, a little bit uh, of drying, we're going to be able to work basically on the uh, underbelly part. And, uh, but first what I'm going to do is uh, I will have to put some uh, putty and I cover all the basically the, uh, the openings and the panel lines and uh, and the gaps. So while this is drying we're gonna finish the underbelly of the aircraft adding the basically the central uh, main gear if I can uh, call it uh, this way and uh, we're gonna glue it together and uh, after it will be dried we're gonna fill all the gaps again with uh, putty. That part requires just a little bit of adjustment uh, I have to say that uh, a bit of fiddling but uh, everything went uh, pretty pretty uh, easily toward the end and uh, after that of course gain some putty and uh, let it dry and uh, while this is drying we're going to start uh, sanding down uh, all the excess uh, putty that we have on our engine and get our engine ready. It's now time to uh, sand down all the extra putty we have on the fuselage and on our windows. So um, as you know this uh, part is requiring a lot of time and a lot of patience. Now we are working uh, toward the cockpit window and that part is also a little bit uh, challenging because if you really want to have uh, flat edges, you don't want to have any more uh, gaps into it and, uh, and the nose, you need always to give a particular attention to the nose. Uh, this is really the what well, we'd say more or less the face of the aircraft. So after finishing sanding down, it's time to rescribe some uh, of the panel lines who disappear during the, that part. So I normally use uh, that razor blade saw and then following a rescribing tool. And while I was doing uh, some rescribing also, uh, there was some touch-up to do as well and some gaps still remaining with the, with the fuselage. So we use again uh, a little bit of a putty. Then of course, rescribing the engine, I'm using always the same technique. And uh, as you can see, it's, it's not very difficult, but at least that give a, a little bit more realistic effect as well. And of course, uh, when you leave a lot of uh, tracks behind, you use a different type of uh, 
sanding equipments and of course the grain is getting thinner and thinner so I always start with the 600 toward 800 and 1000 so when we finish all that the engines and the, the wings now we we're going to uh, put and fix the engine on the wings and of course uh, while it's dry we're gonna fill the gaps with some extra putty as well Now that our uh, fuselage is really uh, completed, we're gonna start the final assembly. So I will start initially with uh, the horizontal uh, stabilizer and uh, then of course adding a lot of putty on the, fill up the gaps with some putty. And of course then uh, we're gonna start uh, putting up the wings and uh, that require a little bit more uh, attention. But uh, I have to say that those wings were quite heavy. So, um, and, uh, and the attachment were not so good, so I had to, to spend quite a bit of time basically trying to uh, let the glue uh, get a grip and dry out before I was able to uh, release it. And then we of course uh, fill up all the gaps on those wings with some, uh, some putty. There will be a little bit more uh, sanding down uh, process on the way as well. And uh, that require a little bit of time, but uh, I would say that uh, overall uh, the result was uh, quite decent. So off camera I uh, used also some uh, silver paint to paint uh, the leading edge and now what I'm going to do we're going to use the photo edge part for the uh, wing fence um, and that honestly gives a much more realistic uh, part. Uh, anyway you could also redo it with a very thin uh, plastic card. So now we're going to add some covers on our leading edge for the anti-ice and then uh, we're going to paint our wings and uh, the uh, engine mounts and the wings will be painted in a very light grey color. Then of course there will be more masking to do and then uh, we're gonna paint the belly uh, using a dark blue color. Actually yeah, it's, a, it's a blue, a regular blue color from Tamiya. It's the uh, X4 and then I will, uh, I will add uh, that livery for uh, Armenian Airline. So uh, that require uh, I should have been a little bit more cautious and get some more uh, some more um, grip on the on the painting scheme because uh, you will see later on uh, there was some uh, a big gap between the white and the uh, and the yellow and I had to repaint it basically with a normal paintbrush but you will see that a little bit later on. So the curing time for uh, that blue paint will be a couple of days uh, around three to four days as. Uh, if I use a, a shorter amount of time, uh, I have the, normally the issue of uh, basically seeing the mark of the masking tape on the blue paint. Now we are going to work uh, again on the, the undercarriage and uh, we are going to put the scissor basically on the main landing gear. So uh, that uh, scissor basically you have to fold it into uh, two parts and then you can fold it to replicate the scissor. So this will require a little bit of super glue as well and a little bit of fiddling. Then we're gonna adjust the part and cut it and put it directly uh, on the landing strut. So uh, normally what I will do after that, I will paint basically the strut in the metallic paint. Uh, we'll replicate that uh, nice shiny metal.
So uh, we're gonna fix now the uh, gear door on the landing gear bay, on the landing gear strut. And uh, I have to say that they, those ones were in photo edge part, they were very easy to prepare, two parts, and uh, give enough details and uh, more realistic than uh, the one we have in the kit. Now we are going to uh, add as well uh, those, basically the buggies will be uh, fitting on the main landing gear. And uh, I have to say that this was composed of two or three parts and uh, that gives enough details and uh, I have to say that the result was, uh, was quite nice and accurate. So after fitting uh, all uh, those uh, undercarriage uh, together, we're gonna now paint our wheels. So for this I will use uh, the regular Tamiya matte black and uh, after that we'll be able to mount them on the, basically on the, the undercarriage. So for this I did initially the nose landing gear and then after that it was easy to put it on the, on the main landing gear. Just a quick uh, paint touch-up on uh, the cut, basically. And uh, after that, time for uh, weathering our undercarriage. So for that, I use uh, a panel line uh, wash from uh, Tamiya, the black one. And I have to say that the result gives uh, quite a good realistic uh, thing. After masking uh, our blue and four days of curing time for that blue, it was time to paint uh, the rest in white. So the engines are in a white, glossy white color and then we did uh, the fuselage and the tail as well in white. We also are going to prepare now the passenger door with the stairs. So uh, one will be painted in white, the other one will be painted uh, in blue. And uh, while it's drying as well, there was also the wing tips on the, the stabilizer and the wings who need to be painted in a bright uh, red color as uh, most of the Russian airplanes have. So now we're finishing the passenger door in blue and then uh, while uh, the paint uh, will be dried, now we're gonna use uh, some Tamiya mix and I use basically uh, a color of a very light uh, gray color. It's a mix of white and uh, light gray. And uh, I have to say that this time I had to use a paintbrush and it was much more easier. It's now time to decal the aircraft. And as you can see, we can see the gap between the, the blue and the yellow band and uh, the yellow stripe. Unfortunately, um, I was not careful enough, but uh, at least that can show you uh, how careful we must be when we plan the paint and when we add uh, some masking tape. Uh, after that, I had to use, of course, uh, a paintbrush, but you will see that later on on the paint touch-up. But uh, Luckily, at the end, uh, we couldn't see the, the mark of the paintbrush. You will see that uh, later on on the, on the photo result. I have to say as well that uh, filming on uh, such a big aircraft was uh, quite challenging. So uh, that's why it's a little bit difficult to see uh, some nice uh, close-up uh, on uh, decaling the aircraft. Uh, I tried that way, but uh, it, was not, uh, it was not very easy and very convenient to apply the decals correctly. So uh, that's the decaling process. and. Uh, now we are going to do the touch-up and as you can see uh, that's uh, the paintbrush I use, pretty, uh, pretty large one but I have to say that I use uh, two layers basically and uh, while this was drying I put a second layer and then a third layer basically to make sure that uh, the touch-up were uh, at the correct uh, color. So last part, we are now going to use a wash. For this, I use a dark pastel that I mix with water and a little bit of uh, liquid soap. And uh, then I will be able to uh, get all the panel lines uh, basically uh, coming out. So for this wash, because I never, we never saw regularly, uh, we don't see very, very clean uh, Russian aircraft. I haven't seen many in the, in the past years. But uh, this was the best, uh, the best technique I have basically. And this, very, this is very forgiving as well if you're not used to uh, those wash techniques. Because if you have too much of a, a black or a, of a wash, you just put 
a lot of water and everything's gonna wash out so uh, this is the best way for me uh, to, to do my uh, my wash on the aircraft and give more realistic and weathering uh, engines So this is the final result of that uh, Ilyushin 86 from uh, Armenian Airlines. I hope you enjoyed that build with me. Uh, if you did so, please give me a thumbs up or subscribe to my YouTube channel. And uh, I will see you soon for uh, another uh, build review. So globally, I was very, very happy about that aircraft and especially the details with the photo edge part, but that gives a lot of extra work. But sometimes it really was to, to do it. So thank you for watching and see you on my next build.